Sean, I like to ask, everybody likes to ask, how did the universe begin? What were the mechanisms? How did it work? But a more fundamental question that gnaws me is, did the universe begin? I think that's a better question because we still don't know the answer to the question, did the universe begin? You would sometimes get the impression that we know because cosmologists like myself talking to a wider audience sometimes pretend that we know the answer to this and there's a good reason why. We have a theory, the theory of the hot big bang. So we live in a big universe right now, but it's getting bigger. Hubble, Edwin Hubble in the 1920s discovered that everything is moving apart from everything else. And we had a theoretical understanding of what happens if you take an expanding universe and play the movie backwards and go backwards in time. Everything was closer together. You might say, well, did it bounce or does it all just crunch into one big single thing? The answer is, to our best understanding, the theory of general relativity predicts that it crunches into one big single thing. So, so, so that's theoretically where it started. That's right. So general relativity says loud and clear the universe had a first moment which we call the Big Bang. The Big Bang is not a point in space. Mm -hmm. It's a moment in time. It's a moment when the density of the universe was infinite, when the expansion rate was infinite. So a lot of cosmologists will say there was, there was a beginning. And the problem with this is that the prediction that there's a beginning or the understanding that there's a beginning is based on general relativity. And we know general relativity is not right. <laughs> The reason we know it's not right is because, for one thing, it predicts a singularity. It predicts that things are infinite, and we don't think that that can be true. Also, general relativity is not compatible with quantum mechanics, which we do think is right. So basically, we have a prediction that the universe began based on a theory we have no right to trust. <laughs> so the right answer is, we don't know yet. And if you look at sort of the cosmological models that professional cosmologists are bandying about, some of them feature a beginning, a true first moment in time. But increasingly, many of them don't feature a beginning at all. They have an eternal universe that lasts infinitely far into the past and will stretch infinitely far into the future. So this is different than the steady state model, which was popular maybe in the 1950s in, the, in that range of time, uh, because that was sort of a universe that was always the same and kind of making new matter in some way versus the Big Bang. And then when the Big Bang won by the data, the steady state went out of business. There's no question the Big Bang beat the steady state model based on data. Theoretically, the Big Bang was always a little prettier, actually, than the steady state <laughs> model. But there was a philosophical consideration that made steady state very attractive. You look at space, you look at the distribution of galaxies in the universe, and it's uniform. Mm -hmm. On large scales, the universe is the same in every place. Einstein says that time and space are closely related to each other, so a natural conjecture is the universe is the same at every moment in time. Mm. So how can it be true that the universe is expanding but the same at every moment in time? So the steady state people knew and accepted that the universe was expanding, but they said that as it was expanding, new matter was being created. So that the density, the average amount of stuff, was the actually same. the same. same. Right. And that makes predictions. That means that the universe is going to look similar billions of years ago to how it looks now. Since then, we've looked at it. It does not look similar. The density of the universe was enormously higher. There's the remnants of the hot stages that the Big Bang model predicts. OK, so th what that would mean is that the argument, at that point at least, really favored that the universe had a beginning. That's right, yes. We, then, then what happened? This is a well, detective story. That's right. So we are trying, as scientists, to push our empirical understanding of the universe further and further back. So in the 1960s, we finally discovered the predicted relic radiation from the Big Bang. If the Big Bang is a hot, dense state, hot matter glows. It gives off light. It was so hot and dense that it was an opaque plasma. But there's a certain point at which it cools enough to become transparent. And then it just releases light into the universe. So that's about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, that this light gets released into the universe. And in 1965, we found it. Nobel Prizes all around. Yeah. Penzias and Wilson found it. So we, since then, have done even better, because now we can push our understanding back to one second after the Big Bang. That's because the early universe was so hot and dense, it was a nuclear reactor. It was doing fusion, turning hydrogen into helium and other light elements. We make a prediction using nuclear physics and our theoretical understanding of the expansion of the universe. We match with the data. It's a perfect match. 
So we have a story to tell about the universe from one second to one minute old, and that story fits the data we have right now. So there's no question the universe is not the same at different moments of time. It changes. The question is, before the Big Bang, before the moments that we would call the very earliest seconds of the universe, was there something else out of which our universe arose? Right, and so that's the question. I mean, because all the data was pushing more and more towards there was a beginning, and we're now within one second of that, and, and, and the question now is, was there something before that? That's right. We use the phrase, the Big Bang, to refer to that earliest moment of the history of the universe where we don't understand what is going on. <laughs> it's a placeholder for our lack of understanding. So I can sensibly talk about one second after the Big Bang, even though I don't know what happened at the Big Bang, at the Big Bang, maybe things just came into existence. Stephen Hawking, for example, would say that the universe came into existence at the Big Bang. But it's also a possible fluctuation. a fluctuation out of nothingness. So it was not pre-existing nothingness that turned into the Big Bang. It's just, as you would say, talking about what is before the Big Bang is like talking about north of the North Pole. Right. It's a nonsensical right. idea in this scenario. What are some other ways? There's lots of other ways. You think that there is a pre-existing universe that somehow creates a Big Bang out of it. My favorite idea is that the pre-existing universe is empty, that there's really nothing there except for empty space. And then the obvious question is, what, why does anything happen in empty <laughs> space? What is there to do the happening? But this is real kind of space? This is real space, yes. It's, just, it's in fact, think of it this way. Our universe right now is expanding and emptying out. Mm -hmm. We are headed toward Empty space. Sure. Our future sure, is sure. empty space. It'll take a long time to get there because we have a lot of stuff in the universe, but eventually we'll all dilute away. And our current best understanding is that phase of emptiness lasts forever. Mm -hmm. So empty space is a very, very natural condition for the universe to be in. You're full of good news today. Full of good news. The universe is going to die out, and <laughs> happily, the really good news is it will take a Google year, <laughs> 10 to the 100 years right. before it happens. The question is, uh, is that the end? Is that, why don't we just stay in empty space if that's true? The really good news comes again from Stephen Hawking, who in the 1970s with Gary Gibbons showed that even empty space is not perfectly quiet. Mm -hmm. Just like a black hole will actually radiate when you take quantum mechanics into account, empty space radiates when you take quantum mechanics into account. Mm -hmm. Empty space has a temperature, which is not quite zero. Mm -hmm. And if there's a temperature, then random things can happen. A temperature means that particles exist and bump into each okay, other. Okay, so, rand so, so random virtual particles, fluctuations in empty space is one way that there could have been a prior activity before the Big Bang. So empty That's space right. could have given rise to the Big Bang, which you said you like. The other way is that there has been a, an eternal chaotic inflation and many universes being generated over infinite periods of time, and we're just one of those infinite varieties. There's more than one cosmological scenario that lasts infinitely far. Eternal inflation is certainly a very popular one, probably the most popular one, but there's been a lot of pushback recently from cosmologists who think that it actually raises more problems mm. than it solves. Uh, inflation is a wonderful theory invented by Alan Guth that explains how you start with a little patch of space and just through the natural evolution of the laws of physics, it turns into a universe like ours. Mm. The question is, how likely is it you're going to start <laughs> with a patch of space like that? That's one question. But the other interesting thing is that almost always, if this happens at all, if you get a little bit of inflation to make a universe like ours, inflation never ends. Right. It makes an infinite number of universes right. like right. ours right. and an infinite number of universes not like ours. Right. And then you would like to ask a question, well, what do you predict in such an ensemble of possibilities? And the answer is it's very hard to predict anything because everything happens <laughs> an infinite number of times. Right. So putting it all together, did the universe have a beginning? My best guess is the universe did not have a beginning. I worry that if the universe had a beginning, then we're stuck being unable to solve some of the puzzles about why the early universe looks the way it does. You would just have to say, that's what we're stuck with. There's nothing you can do about it. That's our universe. If our universe did not have a beginning, if it came from something else, then you can hold out the hope that the laws of physics will explain to us why our early universe looks like it does.